Okay, so you go over to a friend's house and you get served up a plate of crispy fried insects. So how do you respond to this? Well, how you respond really depends on whether you normally eat crispy fried insects or not. Is it part of your culture to have this dish? If it isn't, let us think of the different ways in which you can react. One of the one of the ways you can react is to say, oh my gosh, this is disgusting. This is wrong. I don't want anything to do with this. And one of the things that we're doing here is that we're judging your friend's culture from the position of your own culture. What's the alternative way that we can actually judge the situation? One other thing we can say is, yeah, you know what? I can see why he I can see why he likes this dish. It might not be for me, but I can see why he likes it. And what are we doing here? We are actually again assessing and judging our friend's culture, but from a different viewpoint. We're judging and understanding their culture from within their culture. And these different perspectives that I've um, outlined, that's why I drew this semicircle that you could see here, because really how we view these fried insects, how we view them is down to our own, um, the kind of cultural perspective that we take. And these different cultural perspectives actually have their own terms. So. One term that I want, if we're going to judge another person's culture from our own culture and really to say things like, you know, this is disgusting, this is right or this is wrong, whether it's to do with food, religion, politics, any customs or rituals or anything else, what we're doing is we're becoming very ethnocentric. And what being ethnocentric means is that we are really judging our own culture to be superior to that of others. On the opposite side, as we start to look at cultural events, whether it's the food or any other cultural event um, or cultural phenomenon, from a perspective of the other person's culture, we start to um, move into the concept of cultural relativism. And what cultural relativism means is that there's no right, absolute right or wrong, but we have different cultures who are themselves valid. Cultural relativism, relativism can somewhat falter if someone uses it to um, conduct activities that really violate the rights and dignity of our fellow human beings, no matter what culture they are in or from. So that's something important for us to also consider. Now, based on our insect dish, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, groups. And what I want to do is um, talk to you about groups by mentioning um, how we, uh, by splitting up I want to talk to you about groups and how groups are formed. So let us take this first group over here, and this group will think that insect insects are pests and they're not to be eaten. So let's draw a few different people that could be part of this group. And the second group really thinks of insects as dinner. And let's draw a few of them over here. Okay, so so the reason why groups form is that people within groups share psychological, some kind of psychological connection with their peers. So that could be related to their love of insect dishes, or it could be related to politics, it could be related to spirituality, any other cultural issues, it could be related to anything at all. Right. So let us, let us label these groups. So if we are in, in uh, if we are actually in this group ourselves, this is Let's label this us, and let's label the dinner group them. Hmm. Let's let's use some more formal titles. So instead of saying us, we can actually refer to this as the in group, the group that we are in, and the group that we are kind of psychologically most connected with. 
and then become something called the out loop. And what we know is that people in the in group demonstrate um, a lot um, a lot stronger interactions than people who are in the out group than the than the interactions with people who are in a different than uh, in the in the out. So these interactions are weaker. And the other thing is that um, not only are these interactions stronger but then um, or more common but they may potentially be more uh, influential as well but certain funny things can kind of happen in groups one of the things that can happen is we can have something happen called um, in-group favoritism so what do I mean by that in in-group favoritism we tend to favor people who are in our group, who share whatever this psychological attribute is that we um, feel connected to. So in this circumstance, we are very friendly towards the people in our in-group. But what about, what about the people outside? What about the, the them, the out-group? What do we do towards them? Well, the people in the out-group, we are actually dead set neutral. We don't extend them the favor. We don't go out of our way to help. We're not nasty or horrible or unkind. We just don't give them the favors that we do to our in-group. Now, there's another phenomenon where we might be a little bit nastier to the out and that's called out-group derogation. And in out-group derogation, what we find is that, again, we are super friendly and super nice to our in-group. But when it comes to, when it comes to the out-group, we are not so friendly. We're actually mean. We may actually discriminate. And, and this tends to happen, the out-group derogation can actually happen if we feel that the, the um, out-group is in some way threatening to undermine or stop our in-group from achieving success. And one last thing I wanted to mention is the idea of group polarization. Now, this is a phenomenon where the decision-making machine that is the group makes decisions that are more extreme than any of the individual members would be inclined to make. So the group's opinions and actions and decision-making may actually become more extreme than what their individual members wanted. This can effectively turbocharge any of these other processes that are going on and, and also turbocharge the group's viewpoints. For example, if the group thinks insects are pests, are they going to set up a fumigation society for the local neighborhood? I mean, I'm saying that in jest, but, you know, I hope the point is made.